Well, we love you. We do love you, Granddaddy. Love y'all too. What is going on, y'all? Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. So we've had some great, great rain though and just absolutely needed it. I mean, the garden is looking great. The fields are looking great. The, the everything is just looking so beautiful out here on the farm. So much so that I'm going to be in the garden today. I got some things I want to take care of. Plus two. I kind of want to be in my happy place today. I want to be in my, my, my peaceful setting, where I like to be. I enjoy gardening so much and kind of re reflect back on someone that, um, that I think helped me find that passion of gardening. And that is my granddaddy. I do have some unfortunate news. Um, granddaddy did pass away. Um, He lived a wonderful 101 years. Uh, I just hope I can get close to that. That is absolutely amazing. A great, great man. So many of y'all got to know my granddaddy from the videos, the happy ones where we celebrated his birthdays, and also the not so happy ones when the tornado last year hit their house. Um, and you guys actually came and Helped my granddy out a lot during that time. But uh, I thought I owed it to you guys to let you know that my granddaddy did pass away. And so I'm gonna spend some time out here in the garden today. And I didn't want this to be, you know, a, 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 a Debbie Downer video. So we're going to just reflect back and enjoy ourselves out here in the garden and just make a great day at it. What? In a hundred years, would you like to do that you hadn't done yet? Skydive or? Oh. Get my eyes when I get to fly again. Where you can fly an airplane? Yeah. Get his eyes fixed so he could fly again. Granddaddy. Boy, well, I enjoyed my airplane. If, if, if the good Lord would, would give me an eyes, I could fly. Or even if I could drive, I'd take the flying. you take the flying over the drive? Yeah. I got some stuff that I wanted to plant and I didn't know exactly where I wanted to plant it. So when I was out here weeding yesterday, it dawned on me, I got this nice little plot here. I got my watermelons, they're, they're right here and the watermelons are gonna take up a pretty big space. Uh, they're, they're, they really are, watermelons are gonna get big. The plants get really big and they just vine out and spread out. And I was like, what can I plant over here that, um? that I really don't have to worry about, and I, it dawned on me. I got several summer cover crops this year. I'm going to I'm going to till this back up, but I'm not going to use the tractor tiller, and not because I can't find the part. I really don't want my tractor running in here, and the, the weight of the tractor kind of mashing the ground down and compacting it, because I've got it kind of loose right now. I want to take my, um, my little front tine tiller that I used to use all the time at our other farm, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to do anything major. I just want to kind of break this up and, and make it more level. And I want to plant buckwheat in here. The buckwheat also is a great summertime cover crop. So it's going to help with erosion. It's going to chop and drop and turn into green manure. Some say that buckwheat is also a phosphorus fixer or helps put phosphorus back in your soil. And the bees, y'all, absolutely love the buckwheat flower. I want to plant a special pole bean, and that is a pole bean that my granddaddy absolutely loved, and it has been in our family for years. Now, he told me that my great, great granddaddy, he knew that he planted this pole bean, and it's just been saved and passed down and saved and passed down, and I still have that pole bean. Now, I haven't grown it since we moved to this farm. I'm gonna plant it this year because this is my granddaddy's pole bean and I think I'm gonna plant it every year from this point forward. Um, I just, it just feels right, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna plant my granddaddy's pole bean. Now it is a special pole bean. I did a video on it many, many years ago. Uh, it's very similar to the Trail of Tears pole bean. I've sent the bean off to several places. Uh, Auburn Ag Department got it, the Birmingham Botanical Gardens got it, Mr. Greg over there at Hoss Tools got it, Baker Seed got it, they all grew it. 
Uh, no one knows exactly which type of variety it is, but it is really similar to the Trail of Tears pole bean. But it's still a piece of my family history. My granddaddy loved that bean so much. Matter of fact, that's the only pole bean he has ever grown, period. That's it. He's never grown any type of uh, pole bean. And what I mean by pole bean, we use these as snap beans. So we would pick them when they're young and you would snap them and then you could uh, put them up that way. He liked to can his. We've always uh, blanched and froze ours, but granddaddy loved canning these pole beans. So I'm definitely, definitely gonna plant some of those for him today. She said, all right, I want you to make a short pill and add me if I I said, okay. I floated <laughs> over, uh, over, over mama down, <laughs> well, I put on the end of the runway. And I, I stopped before I got the second red light. He said, she said, I meant for you Southern Runway. You said make a shot, but I'll make, I'll make a shot of the play. <laughs> <laughs> now, was, was that back in the 60s when she was? Yeah. Here we go. Here they are. Right here. Granddaddy's pole beans. I will have to go. And if we got time to run to town, we may run to town and get some more of these tall T-posts so I can get another trellis up like this. But at least I can get them in the ground. I may weed this area first. This bean though, y'all, is prolific. It is, it's not stringless though, but it is prolific. Does well in our climate, really well in our climate. It's one that you, don't have to water or anything. It just does its thing, y'all. I do got some good memories of these pole beans. You know, she don't like to be on camera right now um, since she's become a teenager. And of course, y'all know we respect that of Mary Carl. But every year, Mary Carl would help me, help me, help me plant these beans. So he loved the flavor of this bean and that's why he grew it. He didn't, honestly, he didn't grow this pole bean because it was a family heirloom. I can tell you that. He grew this pole bean because he loved the flavor. But as he got older in life, you know, he realized that, you know, he had something, you know, special that we did have a family heirloom bean or heirloom vegetable. And <clears throat> he was so happy that I had taken so much interest in gardening because no one else cared about the bean. Honestly, um, I'm really like the only gardener, passionate gardener in the family, which is fine because everybody likes different things. I totally understand that. And I'm gonna do it the same way me and Mary Curl has always done it. I'm just gonna poke me holes in the ground and I'm gonna come back and drop a bean right in there to scrub them fingernails at night. I wear out a fingernail brush quick. I usually have several here because I go through them. But y'all never had any issues with these things not germinating. Or you haven't, they usually do really, really well. So I, I made a mistake. I told you it was my great great, and it wasn't my. It was my granddaddy's great great grandfather. My granddaddy knows for a fact that this bean was in the family that far back, which had been in the 1700s. So it probably came over um, on the boat, and it could be. It could be the original origin of the Trail of Tears bean. I don't know, but um, just an awesome piece of history and a great way to. Celebrate my granddaddy. It says cornbread and collards. Yeah. <laughs> you, you like that, don't you? Oh, yeah. All right, there we go. Got the pole beans planted. If we got time today and we can run the town, we'll get us some more um, eight foot T posts there and uh, get them in the ground. If not, we got, we got, we got a couple of weeks before we really need to get them in the ground. So it's no urgency there. Now I really want to go get these things back in the freezer because it's so humid out here. Uh, that's, he always kept these seeds in the freezer. They always germinate, so I'm, they're going back in the freezer. Holly, 
Get your baby. All right, come on. Let's go put these back in the freezer. Come on, go and load up. That girl. All right, back in the freezer you go. Let me throw it again. You ready? You ready? Holly, right, let's go get the tiller. You want to get the tiller? Let's go get the tiller. I haven't used the tiller since we've been here. Um, so, I'm trying to think, has it been three years since I painted a garden? Or two years? I know we've been living here full time two years, but we bought the land three years ago. So, I do use non ethanol gas, and I always ran the gas out after I got through using it, but. We were in such a hurry when we moved because we had to get out so fast that I'm hoping that um that I just didn't make a mistake <laughs> and the carburetor's gone up. So the oil looks good. There seems to be no evidence of gas being left in it. So I think I did get to get ran it out, ran the gas out, and I don't smell any old gas, so she always cranked every time that I've used it, but it cause you know, I tried to I tried to make sure that um that I always kept that old gas out of it. So, and it's been it's been under cover. It's been it's dusty. I'm gonna wipe it down, but uh, it's been out of the weather. So uh, let's see if she still cranks. And I know front end front tine tillers will beat you to death. I know it. But y'all, at the time when I bought this tiller, gosh knows I don't know how many years ago, this was 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 in my budget. And she has been a workhorse. And I don't want to get rid of it. I, they probably don't make them this good anymore. <laughs> and it's not old, old, but it's probably 15 years old. I think, yes, they'll be 10 cents a gallon. I know. <laughs> 10 I cents a gallon. Well, I love you, do this way, pop up 10 gallons up that. And you let it down, and they sit and watch that. We go. Round the glass tank like that on top of it. You gotta have many gallons you want. Golly. Let's see if it works. Don't let me down now. Right? Don't let me down now. Let's see here. Oh, everything's gonna be on this side, isn't it? Dadgummit. I didn't want to get it off the tractor if I didn't have to. I may have to. Let's see here. Yeah. Let me tilt the bucket. All right. Choke it. It's on run. <laughs> First pull. Brooke's not going to believe it. She said, I don't hope it cranks. I don't think it's going to crank. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to set them way a little bit to get dressed them up. Ain't that something? That's how it goes, Granddaddy. You gotta be in the know. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too rough, because <laughs> them front tine tillers will will beat you to death. And we got some rocky soil, but it is loose because we've already tilled it. Um, way, 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 way. And I'm not wanting to go super deep or anything. I just want to break this all up again. And I don't want these, I don't want these mounds. I want it to be kind of flat. I'm going to fill this whole area and I'm not going to do rows. Y'all, this tiller went through this soil easier than my old farm. <laughs> y'all don't know how tickled I am right now. If, if you guys have been following us for a long time, y'all know when we got here, I literally took a drill with an auger to plant our first flowers here for the flower farm. 
and I had blisters on my hand for pushing down so hard. The ground was that hard, that compact. And the fact that I just took this front tine tiller in here, which I thought was gonna beat me to death, and it went through here smooth as silk. And the color, I mean, the color of the soil looks amazing. It really does look great. So what I'm doing is absolutely working. Oh my gracious. Let's get a cover crop down. I do want to smooth it out some. I still got a few of these humps in here. Now, now that's a good looking seed bed right there. I'm still pretty shocked how easy that tiller went through that soil. Oh my gracious. Unbelievable. And I want this thick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on thick cause what I wanna do is, is I want this buckwheat to help me suppress weeds. So if I plant it thick, it germinates fast. It'll come on up and um, help drown out a lot of weeds. Plus I know the birds are gonna get some. So we want it thick. We want it thick, like a milkshake. You got to know you can do it. But you never, never got in a situation where you felt like you couldn't get out of it. No, no, I, I, I've been in a situation where everything had to be done when it had to be done. All right, y'all, we got it done. Got my granddaddy's pole beans planted. Got the buckwheat cover crop planted. And hopefully by next week, we'll see some germination. They should start popping on up. I'm excited. I'm super excited. And I know I know granddaddy is looking down and is uh is excited about this too. And thank every one of y'all from the bottom of our hearts for what y'all have done for us and with my granddaddy, especially when the tornado hit. Words, there's no words that, um, there's just no words out there. Y'all are absolutely amazing. Which we were able to get granddaddy's house fixed because of you guys and that was, mm. yeah. yeah. Slip in his airplane. Slip in your airplane. I wish I had an airplane. Man. I know you do. <laughs> I wish you had an airplane too.